Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about The History of Life, a very short introduction by Michael J. Benton. And i um, just like to discuss this short book. I'm a big fan of the very short introductions um, series and uh, I find them really handy for someone like me who's quite a curious person but um, doesn't know perhaps as much as he should do and I think these are really good introductions to subjects as of course what that's what they that's what they call themselves anyway very short introductions and uh, this is a fascinating one Michael J Benton Professor Michael J Benton was um, between 2001 and 2008 head of the Department of Earth Sciences at the University of Bristol this was published in 2008 actually and um, in a, such a short book its um, brief is vast to cover the history of life from its very origins all the way up to um, where we are today, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, we begin with an introduction to paleontology and, um, the fo you know, how reliable the fossil record is, um, cladistics, etc. And then we come into the, um, the first chapter with theories concerning the very origins of life and with that of course comes into questions such as how old actually is the earth um, and with that comes you know data from um, uh, uh, rocks you know dating rocks actually seeing how old rocks are um, looking at uh, fossil records of the very earliest organisms and finding the simplest organisms today apparently is a clue to how life itself started. And um, now parts of this chapter, if I'm being honest, went a bit above my head. Um, it was a bit technical for me. Um, you know, my shortcomings, of course, not the book. Um, and um, apparently RNA, which is somehow related to DNA, is... Uh, one of the ways life happened. Um, so I'd probably need to read that chapter again, but it's a fascinating chapter nonetheless. Um, and then from there we go into um, the rise of sexual reproduction amongst organisms. Um, it makes, you'd think it would be more efficient and it makes more sense for organisms to reproduce asexually like some do, you know, making clones of themselves, etc. Um, and um, sexual reproduction has its limitations but as far as evolution is concerned it makes life adaptable to its surroundings uh, far more successfully than perhaps asexual reproduction and um, you know and it really was a game changer when this started to happen when sex started to happen and um, you know he goes uh, back to the very earliest, they think what the very earliest organisms were that did start to reproduce um, sexually. Again, very fascinating. And again, probably something you need to read a couple of times to really get your head around, but, um, you know. And then something remarkable happens in the next chapter, which I'd never heard of, the Cambrian Explosion. Somewhere at the beginning, at the end of the Precambrian era which is right at the very dawn of time um, in fact most of time actually was pre-Cambrian we don't know much about it at all all of a sudden at the beginning what we call the Cambrian period is an explosion of creatures in the fossil record which have skeletons and shells all in the ocean still of course and you know this is really mind-blowing you know how this happened and why did it happen did it happen? Perhaps the fossil record is misleading. Um, all these questions are brought up in this fascinating chapter. And then somewhere, I think in the Silurian or Devonian uh, periods, uh, I think that's what classically, that, I think that's what traditionally uh, we're told, but I think it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, life began to come onto the earth. 
And it's really weird to think that at some point the earth was just barren, a barren rock. But apparently it was. And at some point animals, creatures began to, and plant life of course, plant life first, began to stretch out beyond the waters. Perhaps opportunistically, for whatever reason, for more sunlight or to catch insects or whatever. Um, but there we go. Um, and of course that began the rise of the quadrupeds. And you know, there's some interesting illustrations of fossils which bear many of the hallmarks of fish, but also have these four legs. So, you know, clearly something, um, something earth shattering happened in the history of life at this point. And then we come into the Carboniferous period, where the, apparently the air, the, the atmosphere was so rich in oxygen, plant life flourished and um, animals flourished, creatures flourished. Apparently insects such as dragonflies were huge, worms were huge, aquatic animals were huge. Um, an amazing time of these huge, vast, verdant forests, which of course eventually became our coal, you know, carbonised under the earth for millions upon millions of years. And um, and then in the next chapter, there's a real shock. I'd never heard of this. I found this fascinating. Through prehistory, there's, there was a series of, I think, five what they call mass extinction events. The most famous one being, of course, how the dinosaurs ended at the end of the Cretaceous period. But long before that, there was an even worse one called the... Um, the end Permian mass extinction, in which 95% of all life just went, just perished. Incredible to think. Um, and, you know, no one really knows why, but Benton suggests perhaps it was, it was these incredibly powerful volcanic eruptions in Siberia that poisoned the atmosphere and poisoned the seas, turned the water stagnant, and basically killed off almost everything it must have been truly cataclysmic um, and there were some creatures that seemed to were lucky and survived and you, according to the fossil record they're found all over the earth <laughs> because they they somehow managed to escape this but um, yeah uh, really interesting chapter in this book the end Permian mass extinction then we go into the Mesozoic era, and this is our familiar time of dinosaurs, uh, etc., from all of our favourite um, prehistory, prehistoric books from childhood. And um, again, fascinating. Um, it's here that we begin to perhaps see things which would be quite familiar to us today, you know more lizards and reptiles around uh, things like alligators crocodiles as well you know there with the dinosaurs perhaps or at differing times um, certain fish we'd recognize uh, certainly the plant life and trees etc quite interesting but of course this ended badly as well this time with that massive uh, meteorite crashing into mexico and causing the um, another extinction event, you know, the most famous one, I guess, where all the dinosaurs were killed because of that, uh, because they think because they think of that meteorite uh, hitting Earth. And that brings us to the final chapter, where we're really almost up to date in terms of this book. Anyway, of course, it's uh, still a vast period, but you know, the evolution of mammals mammals coming to the fore, um, horses, of course, rhinos, elephants, etc., um, all adapting to their uh, surroundings. And um, we have, um, of course, primates, monkeys, apes, and eventually humans as well. Um, a fascinating chapter, which really brings us up uh, really to now. And um, 
Benton just has a lightness of touch, you know, it's such a vast topic, but, you know, he never takes himself too seriously, and it's, you know, there's some quite funny moments, surprisingly, in this book, the way he writes it, and uh, it's, it's under a real lightness of touch, and um, he also reminds us, and perhaps, you know, we tend to have, be full of hubris, don't we, um, mankind, you know, and although we're incredibly intelligent creatures, we perhaps sometimes a bit uh, get a, a bit too big for our boots and um, you know reminds us that this story the history of life is not teleological you know there isn't an end point um, from what we can see uh, through evolution you know these mass extinction events uh, these um, the way life adapts uh, in sometimes quite unexpected ways um, and humanity mustn't ever think that it's um, somehow got its grip on uh, the forces of nature. So yeah, a fascinating book and I think one of the strongest in the very short introduction uh, series, certainly one of the strongest I've read. I've just included a brief slideshow of some of the main points uh, and uh, ideas in this book. Thanks for watching, bye.